Midwest. Welcome back to Midwest Today. I'm Sarah, and I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Ethan. How are you today, Ethan? Hey, Sarah, I'm doing great. I've got my coffee, the sun is shining, and I'm excited to dive into today's stories. How about you? Did you do anything fun this weekend? I sure did. I spent some time at the lake with friends. Nothing like a little sunshine and water to recharge. How about you? I went to a new barbecue place downtown. It was fantastic. We'll have to go there sometime. But speaking of weekends, Chicago's got a lot coming up, doesn't it? Absolutely. Between market days, the Chicago Air and Water Show, and the Crosstown Classic between the Cubs and the White Sox, it's going to be a fantastic weekend. Let's dive right into our first story. First up, we're taking a trip down memory lane to one of Chicago's most bizarre incidents, 20 years ago, on August 8, 2004, a tour bus belonging to the Dave Matthews Band crossed the Kinsey Street Bridge and released 800 pounds of human waste from its septic tank. And as fate would have it, that waste rained down on passengers aboard the Little Lady, a sightseeing boat operated by the Chicago Architecture Foundation. Can you imagine the horror and confusion those poor tourists must have felt? It was quite the spectacle and it quickly turned into citywide infamy. The band's driver, Stefan Vohl, was later convicted of reckless conduct and water pollution, receiving probation and a hefty fine. Dave Matthews' band, although not on the bus at the time, expressed deep regret and donated $100,000 to local environmental causes. Two decades later, Poopgate remains a peculiar but enduring memory for Chicagoans. It's even commemorated with a plaque on the Kinsey Street Bridge. It's a reminder of how the most unexpected events can leave a lasting mark on a city's history. Indeed. Now let's move on to what's happening in Chicago this weekend. Next, we've got the vibrant pulse of Chicago's LGBTQ plus community gearing up for market days. And Sidetrack, the iconic North Halsted Bar, is set to host an electrifying lineup of events. Starting today, August 8th, and running through August 12th, Sidetrack has something for everyone. Tonight kicks off with the Scruff Glow Party. Doors open at 3 p.m., and the Neon Lit Party runs from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's a great way to start the weekend, especially if you're looking to make new friends or reunite with old ones. Tomorrow, Friday, August 9th, it's all about rooftop revelry and dance. The rooftop open event starts at 1 p.m., with all-day party music, followed by TGIF show tunes from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., and ending with a dance party until 2 a.m. Saturday, August 10th is packed with Drag Plus games starting at 11 a.m. Enjoy playful competition and dazzling drag performances, then dance the night away from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. Sunday, August 11th opens early at 11 a.m. with special show tunes from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m., followed by the Sunday Fun Day After Dark dance party till 2 a.m. Finally, wrap up your market day's experience on Monday, August 12th with Musical Monday. Sidetrack opens at 1 p.m. and the beloved event runs from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's the perfect melodic end to a high energy weekend. Sidetrack's events are a perfect blend of music, dance, and community. Whether you're a local or visiting, each day offers a unique experience that encapsulates the spirit of market days. So, Join the celebration and make memories that will last a lifetime. Absolutely. Now, let's shift gears to some interesting real estate news from Columbus, Ohio. House hunters in the U.S. are eyeing an unexpected Midwest city, Columbus, Ohio. According to a report from Realtor.com, Columbus has ranked as the most popular housing market among online property shoppers over the past year. That's right. Homes in Columbus attracted 0.9% of all listing traffic on the platform, and its property listings garnered 2.4 times the number of views than the national average. Affordability is a major driver of this popularity. Most of the interest in Columbus came from within the Midwest, but among out-of-state shoppers, New Yorkers showed the most interest, followed by buyers from Virginia and California. It's fascinating to see how a city like Columbus is drawing such widespread attention. And it's not just Columbus. Knoxville, Tennessee, ranked number two on the list, with homes there garnering 1.7 times the national average views. 
The report highlights Knoxville's housing affordability, high quality of life, and numerous outdoor activities as major attractions. It's a trend that speaks volumes about the evolving housing market. Many buyers are looking for affordable yet vibrant places to live, and cities like Columbus and Knoxville are hitting the mark. Now let's wrap up our episode with a human interest story from Waseca, Minnesota. In Waseca, Minnesota, Midwest Extraction Services is making headlines as it shifts towards the cannabis market. This story comes to us from original reporting by Waseca County News. Originally launched as Midwest Hemp Farms six years ago, the business expanded into the extraction side of the market and now aims to become the cannabis capital of Minnesota. Co-owner Matt Little has ambitious plans for Midwest, leveraging Waseca's small-town charm and proximity to larger population centers like the Twin Cities. Despite the challenges of setting up in a smaller town, Midwest has built a multi-state cannabis empire, though they currently can't sell THC products directly. Little cited several benefits of operating in Waseca, including lower costs and a stable workforce. He also praised the local government for being accommodating and supportive, recognizing cannabis as a growing sector of the local agricultural economy. Indeed, Waseca's Chamber of Commerce President Ann Fitch noted that hemp and cannabis are agricultural commodities, much like corn and soybeans. The growth of Midwest extraction has helped put Waseca on the map, attracting industry leaders from across Minnesota and nationally. However, Little's ambitions are tempered by Minnesota's cannabis legalization law, which aims to prevent market consolidation. He warned that overly stringent regulations could inadvertently bolster the black market, making it harder for legal producers to compete. It's a complex issue, but Little remains optimistic about the future. He hopes state regulators will take a pragmatic approach, allowing firms like Midwest to thrive and meet the growing public demand for cannabis products. As public perceptions shift and the cannabis market evolves, businesses like Midwest Extraction Services are at the forefront of this change. It's an exciting time for the industry and for communities like Waseca. That wraps up our second episode of Midwest Today. We hope you enjoyed our mix of news, culture, and interesting stories from around the heartland. Ethan, any plans for the weekend? I'm planning to check out the Chicago Air and Water Show and maybe catch one of the Crosstown Classic Games. How about you, Sarah? I'll be at Market Days, enjoying the festivities at Sidetrack. It's going to be a blast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Join us next week for more stories from the heartland. Stay tuned and stay Midwestern. <laughs>